You know, um, 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, right, right around this time, um, I had left another magazine as music editor, and I came to Vibe Magazine as its music editor. And one of the first stories that I assigned was my favorite album's 10-year anniversary. It was Illmatic. 10-year anniversary, 10 years ago, right around this time. So as we started to fill out what the story would look like, we'll get different people to talk about it. Now nah, that's not feeling right. We'll get, we'll get Nas to talk about it. Yeah, that's all right. But you know, sometimes if you get Nas in the wrong interview, you might get that answer that goes, word. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know he do that. You know he do that. You know, you ask the biggest question of your life. And you'll be like, yo, I know he's going to give it to me. And he'll be like, word. <laughs> and then your tape recorder's sitting there, and your tape recorder's looking at you, and nothing's happening but beeping. You go back to your editor, and you got like, what's your story? Word. <laughs> but in this case, we were trying to figure out what was the best way to really celebrate Illmatic. And we did it. You know, we did the story. We got an interview with Nas talking about Illmatic. It wasn't just the one word, word answer. It was a really good story. We got other people in the industry, other people who you wouldn't even think of were affected by the album to talk about the album and to give some insight. And even still, I was like, this, this ain't enough. The pages got cut. It was maybe four, word, four pages. And we really wanted it to be, I wanted it to be six or eight. But you know, the pages get cut in the last minute. And I was like, this ain't enough to tell this story. It's not enough. So I said, it has to be bigger than this. You know, we can't tell our story. I feel like Illmatic represented not just Nas, not just Queensbridge. It represented a generation. It represented a people who were dying to be heard. It wasn't just an album. I mean, I know Nas, you made the album, but it was something that must have come through you that was bigger than you. And I think that's what we respect about Nas today, is that every move he's made had something greater than the words that you hear. It was something that, it was something that connected beyond just the words on the record. And that was from Illmatic to Life is Good. From Life's a Bitch to Life is Good. I stole that from Nas, by the way. I mean, but you know, as a, as a journalist, you know, Nas's words have always confounded us because no matter what we wrote about his music, about his art, our words never measured up to or were able to really get into the depth of what he was actually saying. So when the article comes out on Illmatic and it's too small, and it's even no matter how many pages you get, it can never be enough, you say, what can we do to really give something the best platform? So for the last 10 years, my partner, One Nine, who's out there, one of the best visual storytellers I know, uh, we've been tracking the great ghost of Illmatic for a documentary film that's to come out soon. And in that documentary, we want to make sure that Illmatic and Nas's legacy is a legacy that extends beyond Nas. Again, his words have always been beyond just the records that we see. If you go back to Illmatic, starting with Illmatic, you know, life's a bitch. You know, people like to quote Nas's lyrics, but when you really listen to them and break them down, life's a bitch. I switched my motto instead of saying fuck tomorrow, that buck that bought the bottle could have struck the lotto. Now, what can be deeper than that? And then even when we critics criticize Nas for, for, for being commercial with Lauryn Hill in, in the song called If I Ruled the World, what does he tell us? He would open every cell in Attica and send them to Africa. You know, these are lyrics that they inspire something greater to, than, than us. Don't sleep. Why? Because sleep is the cousin of death. These are things that speak to something beyond us. I mean, if, it, and if you look at all throughout history, it was something greater. Even if in the heat of the greatest rap battle ever, when Nas uh, made the record Ether, and he said, at the heart of that battle, but you're my brother, I love you. He showed us that there was something greater than when we were squaring off in this field and having a very bitter battle. There was something greater than that. I still love you as a brother. 
And that says that something is always greater than just what you see. And I think that the reason why Nas's lyrics have impact, the reason why his, his music has impact, is because it comes from something greater to include us all. My favorite poem of all time is one by Muhammad Ali. And I think um, Nas's career and his life has um, lived up to it. Two words, and it goes with, I believe it tells us everything about Nas that we could imagine. The words, me, we. You guys, some, some of you might know that from Muhammad Ali. He actually didn't write it, but that's another historical fact. But me, we, Muhammad Ali said. And I think if you look at the life of Nas, if you look at his music, this is what he embodies the most, you know? Me, we. And for that, we want to thank you. Thank you very much.